Hi, I'm Dr. Souter here at English Road Pediatrics, and I'll be talking to you today about some common newborn rashes. The first rash I'm going to talk about is called erythema toxicum. Erythema toxicum is a really common rash that occurs in about half of all infants, and it usually presents within the first couple of days of life and then goes away over the course of the next week. The rash looks like red blotchy patches of skin, and in the center of those red patches, there's usually a little red or little yellow bump. The rash doesn't have any systemic effects on the baby. It's not contagious or infectious. We're not entirely sure what causes it, but it just goes away on its own without any treatment. Another common rash is neonatal acne. And this is present in about 20% of infants, and it more commonly affects boys than girls. And is thought to be due to the fact of mom's hormones and baby's hormones on the oil-producing glands of the skin. And it looks like little red bumps or little pimples that are most commonly on the face, on the cheeks, on the upper neck. And it presents within the first six weeks of life and then goes away by three to six months of age. There's nothing that needs to be done to treat it typically. Usually you can just use a mild uh, cleanser on the face, so something like Dove soap or Cetaphil, and just gently wash the face once a day. And it's important not to wash too frequently or rub and scrub the skin too hard because baby's skin is really sensitive. Another common rash is cradle cap or seborrheic dermatitis. So cradle cap, it looks like yellow um, plaques and patches in the scalp that tend to flake. It can also be on the body in the oil producing areas. So on the face, on the upper neck, and you can get it in the diaper area as well. The patches on the body tend to be a little bit more red and inflamed looking as opposed to the yellow greasy scale that occurs in the scalp. So for cradle cap, we, even, we recommend just watching the scalp once a day with a gentle shampoo. If it, you have thick scale, then you can use something like baby oil or mineral oil and massage it into the baby's hair and then brush out the scale with a soft bristled brush and then while you're giving the baby a bath to help release the scale. It typically doesn't bother babies at all. It's just kind of removing the scale for the appearance. It's also common for babies to have a few different types of birthmarks. So one is called nevus simplex, which is also referred to as a stork bite or a salmon patch. And these are little pink or red patches that are on the eyelid, right here on the forehead and upper nose and in the back of the neck. And they usually fade over the first couple of years of life. It, babies can also get blue-gray macules or big round bluish grayish patches on the body. They most commonly occur in the lower spine or butt. Again, these commonly go away within the first couple of years of life as well, but can be mistaken for bruising. It's also very common for babies to get diaper rashes. Baby skin is very sensitive and then the diaper area is moist and is exposed to urine and stool, which can alter the pH of the skin and predispose them to getting rashes. So most commonly, babies can get kind of an irritant or contact rash from the diaper. And this looks like red patches of skin in the areas that touch the diaper. So less in the skin folds and more in the other areas. For this, the best thing is to allow the baby's butt to be open to air when you're able to. I know that this sometimes can be easier said than done, but it's always good for a diaper rash to give a baby a little diaper-free time. Um, for cleaning the diaper area, we recommend just using either unscented wipes that don't have any additives or dyes or just plain water. And again, patting dry the skin is better than rubbing too vigorously. And then you can use a barrier cream. So something that has some zinc oxide in it is good and that just provides a protective coating over the skin to keep it from being exposed. If the rash is lasting for more than a couple of days or there's red open areas or red bumps that are scattered around, then it's important to see your pediatrician. Um, these could be signs of like a yeast diaper rash, which often commonly occurs in the diaper area because it's so moist. 
and may require another treatment like an antifungal. The last thing that I want to talk about is jaundice or a yellow coloring of the skin. So jaundice occurs in most babies and it's due to a protein called bilirubin that's elevated in the blood at birth. So jaundice usually starts on the face and then spreads down lower on the body as the levels rise. Mild to moderate jaundice has no long-term effect on babies, but we monitor the level closely because if it becomes too high, then the bilirubin can cross into the brain and cause effects on the brain and on long-term development. So there's a number of things that can cause the bilirubin level to rise. It tends to run in certain families. Certain ethnicities are predisposed to having higher jaundice levels. Um, if there's a lot of bruising at the birth or if there's a different blood type between mom and the baby, then those can also lead to higher levels of jaundice. So the bilirubin level is checked after birth while the baby's hospitalized and then will be checked again based on what that first level showed and what the baby's appearance is when they're seen in the office. The first treatment for jaundice is just to make sure that the baby is feeding well. Uh, the bilirubin is excreted in the stool, so making sure that the baby is peeing and pooping well is important. If the level gets too high, then sometimes babies need to be readmitted to the hospital for light therapy or phototherapy to help bring the levels down. So I hope this was helpful. I mentioned a lot of common newborn rashes, most of which are benign and not harmful to the baby. But if the baby ever has any sort of blistering rash, open sores, isn't feeding well, or is seeming really irritable with a rash, then it's always best to bring the baby into the pediatrician to have them take a look and make sure that it's not a more serious rash that needs any further intervention. Have a nice day.